Geneviève Bergeron, Hélène Colgan, Nathalie Croteau, Barbara Daigneau, Anne-Marie Edward, Maud Aviernik, Barbara Maria Kluchnik Vidayevich, Marise Laganière, Marise Leclerc, Anne-Marie Lemay, Sonia Pelletier, Michel Richard, Annie Saint Arnaud, Annie Turcotte. It's important to, to realize that this is not age old violence against women. Women have always been victims of violence, and they will probably always, uh, it, it will probably uh, remain so. Tonight, before you, with you, I feel quite tender. On the 6th of December 1989, we were, we were hit with the loss of 14 extraordinary women. 30 years ago, they got up early in the morning, trusting in the future, and not just their future, but also our future. 30 years ago, these women, respective lives and destinies were shattered, which has left us with the obligation to reflect on this loss. The Montreal massacre has left deep scars for many in Quebec. 30 years ago today, Marc Lapine walked into École Polytechnique. He entered a classroom full of students. He separated the men from the women, said he hated feminism, and then started shooting. He obviously hated not just women, he hated feminism, which I think is the, the thing we've missed uh, mostly all these years. Uh, uh, it took us a long time to even acknowledge here in Quebec that this was indeed a crime against women, that this was uh, an act of terrorism. He was aiming women because they were women. But he was actually aiming women because he wanted to send a message uh, of anti-feminism. And I think it took us, well, until now, actually, to really look that in, in the eye. This memorial park is dedicated to the victims of the attack. And this year, the city changed the wording on the commemorative sign to specifically refer to the act as an anti-feminist attack instead of simply a tragedy. And some say that's an important distinction. This was a crime about what was happening between men and women. And I, for me, that is the lesson of the Montreal massacre, which it took a long mm -hmm. time to come to, to grip with, that some men, we never thought this would happen, mm -hmm. uh, but that some men resent the fact of the changing roles to such an extent that they become violent. I um, used to go uh, to school with uh, Sonia Pelletier when I was the victim, a, a girl who was very generous with people around, very discreet but de generous. Uh, she was helping uh, a lot of people because she was a bright girl, uh, especially in math. Every year I remember that. I have two girls. I uh, try to tell them the story so they will uh, perpetuate memory and I, I think that's important. At that time I had just graduated from McGill Engineering two years earlier. I was a young engineer working in the steel industry in Hamilton, Ontario. And to hear that uh, of the horrific tragedy that had occurred at Ecole Polytechnique has, has stayed with me for, for the last 30 years. And I think it kind of galvanized me to want to do the opposite of what the gunman had wanted to happen, where he would discourage women from going into engineering, and in fact, encourage even more women to come into engineering. And now you are doing that. You are galvanizing a project. It's called 30 Years Later. Can you describe what the, the gist of that is? Yes, uh, I'm the chair of the Public Policy Committee for our Engineering Deans Canada group of uh, deans across the country. And so in the summer, I pointed out to uh, some of my fellow deans that it was the 30th anniversary, and I thought that we should be doing something to commemorate and mark this event, since it had such an impact on our community. And so myself and a fellow dean, who uh, Suzanne Cresta, who's the dean of the College of Engineering at the University of Saskatchewan, decided that um, we wanted to put a different lens on what had happened, and to look at women and profile women that had graduated or were in school around the time of the massacre, and so were deeply touched by what had happened personally, but then had gone on to fulfill their potential uh, in terms of their engineering careers. And so uh, we invited all the schools of engineering across the country that had an accredited engineering program in 1989 to submit 
the profile of an alumna mm -hmm. that uh, really exemplified engineering and what women bring to the profession. And as you were profiling, you know, the lives of these women and finding things, you know, that you were in tune with, is there anything, a specific story that really stood out for you? Well, when you look at the 30 women we're profiling, one thing that really stood out is the diversity of the careers they've had as engineers. Um, we have an astronaut who's now our governor general, Julie Payette. We have women that went on to be university presidents. One's a current university president right now, the rector at Laval, Sophie Damour. Um, we have women that have gone on to take senior leadership roles in the financial industry. And we have women that have gone on to create their own companies. Uh, a couple of them went on to create very, very successful companies. Um, and all of them really wanted to do things to improve and help life for other people. So they're just a, a great diversity of perspectives in terms of the careers that they've been able to achieve as engineers. La mémoire permet de refaire le chemin en sens inverse. By remembering, we can backtrack and go back to the present with something that makes our hearts Tonight, more peaceful. I'm reminded that uniting the spirit of solidarity and tenderness, we all turn the tragedy into a triumph of the human spirit.